welcome to Off the Vine. I'm your host, Caitlin Bristow, and today we have former bachelorette Katie Thurston, aka the new F Boy Island Queen. We talk all about what relationships are developing over on that side, what it looks like for her to walk down to the beaches of paradise and see Blake. And she describes her love life right now as a river. <laughs> what? You'll you'll see. Enjoy. Hi, Katie. Good morning or afternoon, I guess, depending where you're at. Oh, it is afternoon, but it still feels like morning. Even though I got up and did a workout this morning, I just, I'm starting to accept the fact that I'm 38 and I'm always tired, no matter what. I think it's just 30s in general, honestly. Maybe it is. I've, every time I ask somebody how they're doing, I feel like majority of people are like, I'm tired, but I'm good. I'm like, I think that is just like people, maybe not even an age. Maybe just humans are tired. We're all tired of shit in the world. Everything. (laughs) Yes. That's why we just like mindlessly scroll. We have no energy for anything but scrolling now. It's true. I even, I'm so lazy and over it that even if a video is over 20 seconds, I'm like too long. It's true. You look pretty. Thank you. I got ready for you this morning. Yeah, you look really nice. I didn't, but I, well, I put a little bronzer on, but I got back from my workout and I was like, beanie it is, but you look really cute. I'm sad we missed each other in LA. Are you feeling better? Oh my God. Yeah. I was like so like overworked, like the show coming out and all the PR and just like everything leading up to it. It was just so much energy. And I was just like not feeling good. And I was like, I cannot drive all the way to LA and back for this interview. I'm just, I'm not Mm -hmm. doing well. Yeah, no, I'm glad you did that. So, Kate, you said this. So, okay, where were you before San Diego? Washington, like Seattle area. Oh, right. Seattle. Did you ever think you would be getting a place in LA. Oh, no. No, I never did. And, and, and even like every time I think I know what is happening in my life, things change. You know, we were just yeah. talking about how every time I'm on your podcast, I'm in a, a whole new era of my life. And I'm like, when is it going to yes. stop? When is it going to slow down? <laughs> I hope I hope it slows down, but in like a way where it doesn't stop. Like you just yeah. have enough, you know, space to hold for yourself, but you're still just like showing up on our TV screens. I never thought I would see you on reality TV again after – The Bachelorette, because I mean, as we all know, I was right there beside you through that whole journey. And I was like, this girl is never going to do reality TV again. And then when you posted about going on F Boy Island, I was like, oh, it's a spoof. Like she's doing a bit. She's in comedy now. So she's like, (laughs) obviously never going to go on TV again. But how did how did this happen? Oh my God. I was not expecting it either. I was reached out (laughs) to by the show. And so I was kind of like, never heard of the show. Hadn't watched it. But then I like asked all the questions. I'm like, okay, how does it work? First of all, the the prize money. I'm like, okay, you had me at prize. Got it. Yeah. (laughs) And then you had me at no engagement. Okay, cool. (laughs) And then Nikki Glaser's the host. I'm like, okay, she's a comedian. This is, this is feeling like there's a lot of reasons to say yes to this opportunity. Yeah, I'm glad you did because you could have obviously just stayed jaded and mad and been like, I'm never doing it again. But you weighed out the pros and cons and It seems like a fun show to do because it's kind of like empowering for the women and you, the three of you are so good together too. Oh, and then we see you on the beaches of paradise. I want to jump into that now. When you went to paradise, how, how close was that to filming? Where, was that like a long time ago? When was filming for both of them? They were pretty close to each other actually. Oh, they were? And it was funny because I got the call for both of them about two weeks apart and and technically paradise was the first call. And so Uh I was like, okay, great. Love it. Let's do this. And then by the time I was in paradise, I I couldn't tell those producers like, by the way, I'm about to go on another show. And so it was funny because, you know, there's only so much I can disclose about paradise right now, but I think there was a hope for certain things to happen that I couldn't do because I had other obligations to fill, you know, but I couldn't tell them. And I was like, I don't know. I got to go home. I got my cat, you know, got to go. Peace. (laughs) So. (laughs) And that adds up. I'd be like, Katie wanting to get back to her cat makes sense. Maybe people don't know this, but Elon Gale, who is the executive of F Boy Island, used to be the executive producer of The Bachelor. So (laughs) that's also a funny, interesting little crossover. So when you went down to the beach, what made you have that desire to just go, even though you knew you couldn't, that you had other obligations? What was driving you to be like, yeah, I'm going to do the beach too. Let's let's do it all. <laughs> well, as you know, when a when a bachelorette goes down on the beach, she has a lot more uh pull for what she wants. Yes. <laughs> and so, true. so all of it will make sense when the episode finally comes out of like reasons why I would say yes to it. The only ask Elon had of me was don't fall in love and I said, no promises. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> and what did he say to that? I mean, he just laughed. I mean, it's, it's F boy island. Sometimes there's F girls. So you just you just never know. You know, have fun is, is I think the most important thing. I love it. They're going to do an F girl island, right? They are. Yeah, that should be. It's, it's already filmed. So it'll air uh, early next year. Oh my gosh, this show is so fun. I actually love watching it so much. I know you can't talk too much about Paradise, but you did know going down that Blake was going to be there, right? I did know that, yes. I know that he did not know I would be coming, nor did anyone else know when they saw me walk down. What were people's reaction when you walked down? Because I think a lot of people get really intimidated by people being the bachelorette, which is so funny because we're all like, you know, we're all the same people, but the same, um, yeah. what were people's reactions? Everyone seemed pretty shocked. Like, I remember it felt like the longest five minutes of silence or something. Like, I was like, don't yeah. go get up at once, everybody. You know, like, I was so uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. Because the producer yeah. was like, oh, everyone will get up and hug you. Everyone's going to welcome you. It's going to be great. And so I'm like, yay. So I'm just, doo, doo, doo. and then, like, I just felt like everyone just stared at me. And I don't, I don't know how long it was, but it felt like a lifetime. If you're going down there, obviously you and Blake are going to talk at some point. Can you tease anything about that? Or is it going to be like, a, we have to wait and see? The thing I'll tease, I mean, it's coming up finally. You know, it's like every, every week, yeah. they're like, when are you coming? I'm like, just hang in there, you know? It's just nice to watch two exes just be emotionally mature in their experience together. Totally. Because it had been, what, two years that you guys have – you haven't talked in two years until this. Yeah. So when we split, I obviously continued to reach out. And then once I started dating John, right. it was kind of like a, a block basically. And I respect it. Yeah. I respect the boundaries. You know, I understand. Yep. And so, yeah, for two years, we had never spoken. And so it, our literal first conversation was documented on Paradise. So – that was great. That was kind of nice. I feel like at the end of the day, you, you're you two really good people. And I feel like, again, having the emotional maturity to just have a conversation and be able to look back on it and be like, I'm proud of us. I think that's cool. I'm excited to watch that episode. All right. You know what people say, treat yourself. So I've been doing it. I haven't. I've been treating myself to some good old quality sleep. Having a healthy sleep routine means waking up my best self. And with the Hatch Restore 2, you can gain the tools to build lifelong sleep habits so you can get the quality rest you've always dreamed of. Uh, sounds nice, doesn't it? The Hatch Restore 2 is your bestie for the resty, your peeps for some sleeps, your buddy for the shuddy. What's wrong with me? You get it. I could keep going though. But what I'm saying is you're going to love this innovative all-in-one dream machine, a sophisticated sound machine, light, and alarm clock beautifully designed for your bedside table. Hatch teaches your body when it's time to sleep and when it's time to rise with the light and sound cues. I'm telling you, this is like my best friend. Since I started using Hatch, I wake up feeling so much happier and refreshed and just ready to take on the day. Like if you think about it, having a loud alarm just jolt you out of bed no just like thinking about my old alarm makes my heart race with hatch you'll wake gently with a sunrise alarm clock that supports your natural circadian rhythm and right now hatch is offering my listeners twenty dollars off your purchase of a hatch restore two and free shipping at hatch.co slash otv sleep deeply wake gently with the restore two go to hatch.co slash otv to get twenty dollars off and free shipping that's hatch.co slash otv Family, friends, and Lumi whole body deodorant. These are things I'm thankful for this year. Why is that? Because Lumi is a deo like no other. It was created by an OBGYN who discovered BO is not just an underarm thing. It's an all over thing. She developed a pH optimized deodorant that is clinically proven to block odor everywhere, not just your pits, but your privates, your feet, and beyond. And the best part no matter where you use it, Lumi is proven to keep working for 72 hours. If three days of odor control isn't something to be thankful for, I don't, I don't know what is. New customers get $5 off Lumi's starter pack with my exclusive code and link. For a limited time, returning customers can get $5 off their next purchase of $30 or more too. So use code Vine at LumiDeodorant.com. That's L-U-M-E-D-E-O-D-O-R-A-N-T.com. The cream tube deodorant has been a lifesaver for the days when I'm running around and I could, you know, get a little stinky. I'm human. And if you want to give it a try, Lumi Starter Pack is perfect for new customers. It comes with a solid stick deodorant, cream tube deodorant, two free products of your choice, and free shipping. As a special offer for my listeners, new customers get $5 off Lumi Starter Pack with our exclusive code and link. And for a limited time, returning customers can get $5 off their next purchase of $30 or more too. So use code VINE at LumiDeodorant.com, L-U-M-E-D-E-O-D-O-R 
A-N-T.com. And thank you, Lumi, for making this holiday season smell a whole lot better. Um, do you still talk to John, by the way? Is he in your life at all? No, I mean, really. we have mutual friends, so he, he pops in and out. But, like, I think he's just literally, like, exploring the world or something, so... No. <laughs> Sounds like something he would do. Yeah. Okay, let's get back to F Boy Island. I love that you got to bring Tommy because if I ever in my life do television again, it will be in my contract that I get to bring the dog. So I think my only criticism of the whole show watching is I was like, more Tommy, more Tommy face. I know. Side, please. <laughs> He's such a star. So, what do you girls do when you aren't on dates? Like, what is the downtime? Because I know what downtime is like on The Bachelor and Bachelorette, but what is downtime like on F Boy Island? The filming schedule was so nice because we filmed for five days and then we had two full days off, which as you know, in the Bachelor world, that's unheard of. Unheard of. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. So on the weekends, because it was the weekends basically, because we filmed at a place where there was like weddings were happening. So weekends were off limits. And so we would just Mm. like hang out by the pool, you know, like it was just like normal like girl time. Sometimes we would go on a supervised trip to Target. Like it was, it was fun. It was really good for like resetting mentally too for like the week coming up totally oh my gosh two days of like just recharging the batteries goes such a long way oh that's amazing but before we get into too much I was thinking about this I'm like for somebody who's never watched f-boy island if you were to describe to them like how the format of the show like yeah. In a like a minute, like how would you describe the show? Yeah. So me and two other women get to date a mixture of nice guys, f boys. We don't know who they are. They've self proclaimed themselves as this title, which makes it fun because everyone has their own definition of what makes them, you know, good versus evil, basically. Right. And basically, at the end, there's a hundred thousand dollars that each of us get to potentially take home or split. So if we pick a nice guy that we fall for, fifty fifty is a split down the middle. But if we pick an f boy. The F boy gets the decision to either split the money with us or take all of it and run. So it's tough because we don't know, and we're we're forming relationships, and it's anonymous. But because I know a lot of people are new to the show, there is an episode later where they have no choice but have to come clean and reveal who they are. And so then we're kind of stuck because we might only have F boys left. Oh shit! And also, if you do only have F boys left, it doesn't necessarily mean that these guys want to go off and just like not have a relationship with you. They can still be F boys, be nice and want to continue a relationship. And you yeah, still won't so know that season- till the end. Exactly. So in season two, there were F boys that were picked and then they did choose to split the money. So we call them reformed F boys. So they split the money, left with the girl, you know, not like guys can grow. I think that's the thing to show. That's true. Like, not all F boys are bad. People are just going through their own things and experiences. The eliminations are so f- comical like I just think it's so funny and when they have to be like I am an f boy like a grown man calling himself like not a boy but like an f boy and just having Nikki there throwing chirps in the background and you ladies like in your white chairs and everything about it is just so funny like how do you keep a straight face we don't I mean you'll like I think there was an episode where Holly just like loses it during the elimination because it's so the show is so absurd and that's what makes it so fun is like we never have to be serious we're never like scolded like focused we just get to lean into like our true emotions of like what the is going on right well when it's Elon Gale like if anyone knew him as a human being he is just he's brilliant and so like creative and so goofy and quirky and his mind is like one of the most bizarre beautiful things I've ever seen in my life so like everything about this show I'm like I I watch just going this is so Elon Gale it's it's really funny and I know that Nikki and him were friends before how is it working with Nikki I love her she is so great and just watching her like in action is so much fun and she has so many one-liners that don't even end up making the edit but you're like she's I bet. hilarious. I loved getting to work with her. I think I'm funny and then I hang out with her and I'm like that is a funny ass girl like it, and it comes out of nowhere like sometimes she doesn't even hesitate and she'll have like the best zinger of all zings like have you ever watched Big Brother? I haven't actually. Well, they have this robot that comes in and chirps them all and it's called the Zingbot and they have writers <laughs> for it. And I swear Nikki Glaser is a writer for the Zingbot. And that's another part that makes it so funny to watch too. It's so easy for her to just throw shade at the guys. I love it. It's so fun. How much time do you actually get to spend with the guys? Because I know it's so different from Bachelor and Bachelorette where you usually have a producer that's in there encouraging specific conversation and then as soon as they pull you away you don't get much time what is it like compared to the bachelorette so much time you get so much time uninterrupted yep like basically they don't encourage anything like they just exist truly in the background and so if a guy is going to be shy and just like wait his turn he's probably going to go home whereas like 
if I'm having a 25 minute conversation with someone and no one's interrupting, that's on you. And all of a sudden I'm in a stronger place with that guy. So it was so oh. crazy in the beginning because I was trying to keep the conversation short and light. And I'm like kind of looking over my shoulder and then no one's doing that. Like no one's interrupting. I'm like, okay, I can just kind of breathe for a minute and actually enjoy this. Yeah. Lean into a real conversation. That's so interesting. And I, I don't know if this is true, but I remember Blake Horseman telling me because he did a show and the prize, it was like a um, money prize at the end. Yeah. I heard that they can't manipulate the cast as much because of the prize money at the end. Is that, did you feel like it was less manipulative? I didn't know that, but that makes sense for how our in- interactions were because they're really they're, I'm not even saying this to like kiss ass there was no interruption there was no guidance the most thing I was wow. ever told to do was put my drink down that was it really mm-hmm. put your drink down why was it like creating ice I don't know it's like clinking in like the mic or something yeah. Yeah, that's, a, that's, that's funny. Oh, that's true too. I also thought it would complicate things like having two other women there. But what was your relationship like with Daniela and Hallie? Like, I don't understand how the crossover is not happening. Like you guys all really made it work and it seemed very easy. And how did that work? Yeah, so we just like the first two episodes, we didn't really have our picks yet. So it was kind of like a free for all. I know for viewers, it might've looked like we had a squad already, but we were just very open. And so we just kind of like took turns, like eliminating guys. We're like, does anyone want him? And we're like, no. So like we could send him home, you know? (laughs) And so then, um, then it got to a point where it's like, okay, we really do need to like make these our guys. And so it was kind of like, like a coach trading players. Like, okay, I'll, I'll, I want this one so bad, please. Like I'll give you this one, you know? So we did work it out behind (laughs) the scenes of like, who mattered to us most and who was like a free agent and it all just worked out like it's just it really did like yeah there was, there was no never crossover conflict, wow. no crossover no drama wow that seems highly unlikely but that's amazing and then <laughs> wh- what are the behind the scenes conversations like with the girls about the guys like when you guys are doing the trading and things like that like do you all get along so well and you're just like yeah okay this one's yours and this one's mine and like what do you think about this one Like, do you get actual quality time with them too when you're not on camera? So much quality time. Like, we all got along, which was great. We're all very different too. And maybe that's why it worked. I don't know. Yes. But it really felt like summer camp. Like, we were in, like, the girl cabin and that was the guy cabin. And every night we're, like, gossiping about, like, how we feel and what we want to do. And it was just – it was so easy. I wonder if they scout them out to be so that you three are all so different so that it does work like that because – if you have similar, you know, girls, I feel like that could get really complicated. Or like catty girls, like maybe they pick girls who actually are like championing one another in the real world. I don't know. That's got to be something. I do know it was important for them to make sure that we would all mesh together. You know, if so if there was someone else that was like going to be, you know, all about me kind of vibes, then they're not going right. to cast them as a lead. You have to really have this open mind to like a sisterhood and a yeah. girl's girl. That's cool. I like that a lot. When you guys choose your bottom two, are you only able to choose from the guys you are pursuing? Like I said, in the beginning, it was kind of like open because we hadn't really yeah. got to know the guys yet. So it was easy to pick bottom two. But then there is a certain point where it's definitely our group that we're focused on and the bottom two are in our squad. Okay. And is Pierce an actor? Is he a paid actor? I will say he does have acting experience, but he was not there as an actor. Come on. I felt like he was just like thrown in and like, I, I'm so intrigued by him. I was like, okay, they just threw him in as like, I don't know, an, a paid actor. That's what I thought. He was such a, like an energy. Like he was such a, a ray of sunshine. I love that. Yeah. I wanted more out of that. Okay. Speaking of Monday's episode, we were left on this cliffhanger, which... I just finished like before talking to you. Marco and one of the twins are about to get into a little tiff. But by the time this episode airs, this will have already happened. So did you keep Marco? I did keep Marco. You did? Okay. Because he seems like he'd be good fit and he's a comedian. And do you like dating comedians? (sighs) I I don't try to, but like I do obviously have a type because both Benedict and Marco are comedians. I, I like funny yeah. guys, you know? So naturally a I comedian is definitely a funny guy. It's so funny because I really like a funny guy too. And I'm just very competitive in relationships. <laughs> and so if I was like two comedians, I'd be like, but I'm the funnier one, right? I don't think you could do it. I think you you have to be the the star of this the show in the, in the best yeah. way. And so you need a, a good cheerleader type guy who can be in the background for you and, and support that and be okay with that. Kind of like Claire yes. and her husband. I think totally. they're a really good duo in terms of like Claire's the star and her husband's very supportive and just like happy to be like in the back. That's so true. That's a good point. 
Okay, if you know me, you know I love taking care of my skin. It's probably the number one thing. Hey, what do you know about Caitlin? Uh, girl loves to take care of her skin. <laughs> so I'm excited to share one of my favorite skincare brands, Oak Essentials. Now, if you're trying to achieve that natural no makeup look, Oak Essentials is for you. They have a lineup of luxurious products that really work. Oak Essentials is known for its simple approach to self-care with a lineup of foundational skincare staples made with high quality ingredients to create products that drive results. My skin always feels so hydrated and glowy after I use it. It's amazing. And the Oak Essentials approach to aging is centered on the idea of helping you look and feel beautiful and your best at every age, which I also love. One of their products, the Moisture Rich Balm, is a nutrient-rich balm that supports collagen production and delivers serious hydration for luminous glow. This balm will make you never want to wear makeup again. They also have a conditioning lip balm, which is nourishing, antioxidant-packed lip balm that plumps and conditions lips just in time for winter. Nobody wants crusty crust lips. Oak Essentials is my go-to skincare brand for radiant and glowing skin. And my followers, you're going to get 15% off your first order when you use code VINE at checkout. That's 15% off when you order O-A-K-E-S-S-E-N-T-I-A-L-S dot com, promo code VINE. Whether you're starting from scratch or filling in the gaps, Oak Essential gives you one less thing to worry about. So treat yourself because you deserve it. Hey, if you listen to this podcast, you'll know that thinning hair will happen to approximately one in two women including me. And if you're one of us, just remember that you're not alone. Thinning is normal and Nutrafol helps women address it through a whole body approach to their hair health. Nutrafol is the number one dermatology recommended hair growth supplement clinically shown to improve visible thickness and strength. It has done wonders for my hair in the past three years. And if you follow me, you've seen the results that I've had. So no matter your life stage, Nutrafol has four unique formulas to support women. And each one is physician formulated using drug-free, science-backed ingredients. So you get the most reliable results. Plus, it's now available in a vegan formula. Their newest supplement is formulated for women ages 18 and up with plant-based lifestyles who are experiencing signs of hair thinning. Just go to Nutrafol.com and take their hair health wellness quiz, identify causes for your thinning hair, and Nutrafol will give you a personalized plan for better hair growth. In a clinical study, 86% of women reported improved hair growth after taking Nutrafol women's hair growth supplements for six months. That's amazing. So join me and take the first step to visibly thicker, healthier hair for a limited time time, Nutrafol is offering my listeners $10 off your first month's subscription and free shipping when you go to Nutrafol.com and enter the promo code VINE. Find out why over 4,000 healthcare professionals recommend Nutrafol for healthier hair. Nutrafol.com, spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L.com, promo code VINE. That's Nutrafol.com, promo code VINE. All right, Vinos, this year I am thankful for a lot of things, and one of those things is honey love because, man, is there anything worse than suffering from an uncomfortable bra or shapewear? I think not. Honey Love has revolutionized the bra and shapewear game, say toodaloo to uncomfortable underwire and bulky fabrics that trap in the heat. Let those girlies breathe, ladies. Honey Love's bras feature supportive bonding that eliminates the need for underwire without sacrificing lift. Plus, they're made with fabrics so soft you won't want to take it off. I can't take it off. Give yourself the gift of comfort this holiday season. For this month only, Honey Love is giving up to 50% off site-wide. Visit honeylove.com forward slash vine to shop their November sales and let them know we sent you when the survey asks. I'll be wearing my Honey Love bra at Friendsgiving this weekend because you know me, I'm all about comfort. And whether you're hosting a Thanksgiving dinner, attending a wedding, or just seeking that everyday boost of confidence, Honey Love is the perfect plus one. Treat yourself to the best bras and shapewear on the market and save up to 50% off site-wide at honeylove.com slash vine this month only. Inventory is limited and the sale ends soon, so don't miss their best deals of the year. And after you purchase, they'll ask you where you heard about them and please support our show and tell them we sent you. It's time to ditch the underwire for good thanks to Honey Love. Let's talk about the main guy, Vince, because he is googly eye, so in love, claims that he had it in the bag. He does seem like a nice guy, too, which I hope. But what reality show was he on where he got engaged? He was on a show called The One That Got Away, which is an Amazon TV show, reality show. Oh, I've never that heard Elon, of it. Alon did it. So that's how he got on the show is Alon, you know, pulled from his his little roster of reality people and was like, hey, Vince. Got we got it. a show for you. Oh, funny. So he, so that is such a you know weird common ground to have with someone that you both got engaged from a TV show and that it didn't work out. So you have a type. He feels like your type as well. So 
is that like that connection is pretty genuine there? Yeah, you know, with him, and it kind of reminded me of Blake a little bit actually, and that both the guys on the show came back from reality TV. So they offer this level of comfort of understanding yes. how it works behind the scenes because a lot of guys get in yes. their head their first time, the cameras get weird, producers get, you know, it's, it's they're awkward. But when a guy comes totally. back, whether it be Blake or Vince, there's this level of like, who cares about these cameras? And you can just be so mm -hmm. comfortable and normal with them. That's true, which takes away so much bullshit and yeah, lets you sit into like the realness of a conversation too. Connor was also on Barstool Reality, the Project Verified, which is so funny because could you tell with him too that he's like done this before? You know, he was kind of surprising because he, again, he was kind of awkward in our conversations. Yeah. Also, fun fact, Marco was on X on the Beach. He was? Yeah, I think like season one maybe, but yeah. So all these people, we, we just can't get enough of reality TV. We're just like a certain type, I think. It makes sense because you really have to be cut out for reality TV. And if you do it once and you get through it, I really think we're a specific build because the feedback from the peanut gallery is no joke. <laughs> it's actually like bullying and mean. How have you experienced this show with the, you know, the online trolls or the noise compared to Bachelorette? I think Bachelor Nation is just such a large community that's been established over so many years. I think yeah. where I am lucky is that F Boys F Boy Island's pretty new still. You know, so the fan base, mm. you know, it was on HBO one season, now it's on CW. You know, yeah. if anything, I'm bringing my Bachelor fans to this show. So overall, totally. it hasn't been too crazy. I think the the biggest criticism I get is like, she's already done this. It's like Okay, oh. then you go on the show then. Like, I don't know what to tell you. I have the opportunity. I'm going to do it. Seeing somebody who's comfortable on camera does help. I, I find mm -hmm. that that's really helpful. Wait, there's a few people that have done this before. So it's not just you. I know, I know. What's the guy's name? Benedict or Bennett or what is that? Benedict or Benny for short. Or, or Benny. Okay. He was on a past season of F Boy Island, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. And he came back too. So who cares who's done it? But you were even pretty <laughs> giddy about him. I mean, I so when I said yes to the show, I had only binged watch season two because I wanted to make sure I understood it. And he was on it. He got all the way to the uh, end but didn't get picked. And so, of course, I was like, hey. And he's a nice he guy? He would be my type. So if there's a chance at someone you want to bring, I would not be upset about it. And so I kind of figured if he was single, he would come back because they've done that on on season two. They brought back season one people, you know? And But then when it happened, it was like way sooner than I was expecting. And I was like, oh my God, like he's he's here. This is real. Okay. Yeah. I love the little montage they did about it. It was so funny. How many episodes are left? After this Friday, there's going to be, I think, five more. So it ends early December. Okay, good. I'm so, I'm so into it. If you could describe your love life right now, how would you describe it? Like a river? That's constantly flowing and changing and morphing with whatever obstacles come in the way. Okay, that's good. Your love mm -hmm. is like a river flowing. That was so poetic. Is that Shakespeare? That was amazing. Are you watching Golden Bachelor? I watched the first episode because I got to be at the premiere where everyone was at together watching it. And it was so Cute. wholesome. Like everyone's crying. So wholesome. And then I, I know. And I was just like, I I I can't watch it. It's it, nothing against him. I just actually don't watch like TV in general. So I haven't watched Big Brother, oh. you know, or like even Bachelor in Paradise. I, I see like episodes here and there, but that's it. But do you watch your F Boy Island back when it's on, just so you can like? Oh, you know, I definitely do watch Instagram my stories show. And shit? Yeah, yeah. I, I get I get all the social media assets ready. I get ready to like mass spam everybody. And I'm like, you're gonna love this episode, whatever. You know, like it's it's like my job right now. I gotta promote my show. <laughs> It's so fun. I feel so proud of you because I just think about Katie on Bachelorette crying in a corner and being like, I'm never doing this again. And like how upset you were. And now you're just like, I had fun and you did it again. And now you get to like, you know, have a better taste in your mouth with with TV. And because you're good at it, you're good at it. And you should be in the entertainment space and comedy. You've got comedy coming up. What, are you going on like a tour? Do you have shows only in San Diego? What's going on? So I have a bunch of shows happening, mostly in San Diego for now, but I am moving to LA. So the LA uh, awesome. comedy scene, I think will pick up a lot more. And then anytime I go home, I always do a Washington show. But the thing is, people always are like, come see me in New York and Arizona. And it's like, I love that. But also I do know I'm new and I'm putting in the work to build a really good set, you know? So it's like, yes. I don't want to take advantage of my audience and then make them pay money to see, you know, half-ass comedy. So yeah. putting in the time and the work in LA and in San Diego for now.
That's fair. Are you just loving it? Like, do you love that space? I love it. I love the people. Like, comics are my kind of weird. Like, those are the people I thrive around probably the most. And it's so funny because, like, they start to kind of forget that I was on reality TV. You know, it's like like living, like, a double life. Like, in one world, everyone thinks you're this, like – former bachelorette living this life of luxury and then like yeah you know on a Monday night I'm at an open mic and like sweats and just like talking about weird topics in front of strangers and it's just it's so much fun I love it what is the like biggest flop joke you've ever told like where people are like not funny that one's kind of hard because it just depends on like the audience like I yeah. I did a show in Brea California which is a very yeah. um like conservative city and a lot yeah. of my jokes are about sex <laughs> and so um I was doing like a, a pop-on show but for someone else who was like the headliner and so they're used to like his comedy and then I did mine and like you could just tell they were uncomfortable like it was like older married couples and I'm talking about like getting wet and I'm like okay, get me off the stage. It's not working. <laughs> That's so yeah. funny because you're kind of stuck up there too where you're like, um, okay, so next joke. Like I would feel so anxious because for me, if I'm doing a live podcast, it's people that know my podcast. It's people that know me. It's people that are coming specifically to see me and know what they're going to get. Where if you're doing stand-up comedy, you're like, shit, what's this audience going to be like? How are they going to respond to me? And you have to kind of like just go with the flow. What are your thoughts on Matt Reif? I'm very happy for him. I think I think people who are criticizing, I think there's just like a form of jealousy, which I get totally. it. Like this guy was – off the radar and then you know the pandemic hits and tiktok hits and he hits and and like he's killing it you know good for him like that's what every comic dreams of people don't realize he's put in the work like he's not some new tiktoker who was just around the last year like he's put in the time he's just absolutely crushing it and he does have like this insane work ethic and he has been doing it for so long it's like people think he just blew up on tiktok but he you're right he has been building this like dream for himself and finally like his work is paying off now I think he is so funny he's like a Nikki Glazer to me where like something can happen in the audience and like the things that come out of his mouth are just so hilarious did you see the other one where somebody like overdosed in the crowd and they had to find Narcan and they like brought him back to life and have you seen that clip? No, I don't know if I've seen this. Oh, I got to send you this clip. Anyone that's watching, go watch that clip. It's just, it's genius. His his comedy to me is genius. Okay, so you're moving to LA. Your love life is like a river and you're bringing Tommy. And what else? Like, what do you see in your future for Katie? Once the show stops airing, what do you see? I can tell you right now, 2024, I have a podcast that's going to be coming out. I'm potentially going to be hosting a show. Can't say more about that right now. Comedy is going to just get better because I'm going to be in the LA scene now. Like 2024 is going to be my favorite year so far. I just know it. Wait, I'm obsessed. How do you have, how do we all get this level of like confidence about what's coming up for us? Because I'm in a weird funk where I'm like, is this the downfall of me? Like, does everybody hate me? Am I not gonna like succeed anymore? And I'm just like going into like a pity party almost and I need to get out of it. How do you have confidence to feel good about the year coming up? I think the best thing you can do, and this is what I do every year, towards the end of the year, whatever is bringing me down, I get rid of it. Whether that be people, Uh. certain elements of my life, social media, my environment, whatever it is, because you know, you know what is hurting you. You know what is sucking away the energy and excitement you have for life. And you have to take those steps to eliminate it. And it's tough because there's comfort in people who are in your life. There's comfort in a city that you're familiar with. But if you aren't growing the way you want to, you're not going to grow by staying the same. So you got to shake shit yeah. up and get rid of people and change your environment. Okay, that's a really good call. I have been really like attached to the home I'm in and the amount of people like mediums, friends, like people being like, you need new energy. And I know it would shift so many things if I just got out of this house, but I'm so attached to it that it's so hard. But I even had a random follower DM me and she was like, I know like this might be like invading your privacy, but I'm a medium. And she goes, you need to get out of that house. And I was like, holy shit. Um, Which of course I'm like, I'm feeling that I know, but I'm, I am, I'm too comfortable here. And I need a change of energy. I think there's an expression, I'm going to butcher it, but it's like we become comfortable in a familiar hell 
versus uncomfortable mm. in an unfamiliar potential heaven, basically. And Whoa. so, and now I'm, now I'm just giving you unsolicited advice, but like, I agree. Get out of that house. There's a lot of yeah. memories in there that are like yeah. great, but like, you don't need to be reminded of them anymore. You know, like, it is time to like, physically close that door and and, and yeah. start somewhere fresh, whether that be in the same city or a new one. But like it really does change you even from like a, a new bed, a new cat, whatever, yeah. again, whatever's bringing negativity or memories that are yeah. hurting you, block it, get rid of it, move on from it. I did get a whole new bedroom set. I got a whole new, I, I rechanged everything, but I still need to get out because I think your body remembers more too than you even realize and mm -hmm. even watching I'm sure you feel the same way even watching bachelor for me still to this day and talking about it and consuming myself with it even if I can like still go there and be happy and watch it be like oh my god this is fun I feel like my body finds anxiety around it and I think that might be happening in this house because it's like I bought it seven years ago I've had two relationships in it and as much as I love it I feel like the energy is like affecting my mental health Yes, that's me for San Diego. I came here because yeah. Blake and I were supposed to live here together. Didn't work out. Yeah. I dated John. Didn't work out. I explored relationships in San Diego. Those are, like San Diego for me is a equivalent of your home of like, I got to get out of here. It's not, it's not yeah. good for me anymore. Okay, I'm inspired. After this, I'm going to go on Zillow. And uh, <laughs> even if I go rent something for a little while until I find something I love, I feel like even that would be good. Like just go – find a furnished place, rent it. Like I, I need out now. Get me out. You know, like the girl on, um, <laughs> happy Gilmore when she throws herself on the windshield and she's like, Mista, Mista, get me out of here. That's me in my house. Yes. Trapped I in an it. unknown hell. Okay. Okay. Well, I feel motivated. I, between a workout this morning and talking to Katie Thurston, I am pumped up. Look, you said seven years you got, you've made so much money on that house anyway. Like Take it's your true. profits and bounce. Take your profits and bounce. I'm writing that down. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you for coming on the podcast. I'm honestly so proud of you. I I feel like you've come so far and you've grown so much. And again, talking about being uncomfortable and putting yourself in situations, you've done that and obviously grown from it. And I'm so excited to like see the finale of the show and see what happens. This is it's so fun to watch. It's such an easy watch. Like literally, it's it's under 40 minutes and it's just like humorous the whole time and it's just easy it's, yes. I love it I love it so much do you know when your podcast is going to come out I mean ideally it'll be in January so we're working on some stuff behind the scenes in terms of like the final cool. final stuff but it'll be me and two other co-hosts so it's going to be a really fun time cool. oh that sounds so fun okay well where can everybody find you so that we know when everything's coming out I think just follow me on social media at the Katie Thurston is where you'll find out comedy shows podcasts new opportunities that are happening, all the fun things, Instagram. And Tommy. And Tommy, yes. Of course. <laughs> I love it. I love you. Thank you so much. Wait, is there, <laughs> anything, is there anything we can like spill or tease before I let you go? I will say there is somebody on the show that we all think is a nice guy and he ends up being an F boy. <gasps> Pierce. Just kidding. Hidden okay. in plain sight, basically. Okay, I already think I know who it is, and I don't know spoilers. Vince. Okay, wait, I didn't get a confession from you. Doi, doi, doi. Confession time. Okay, this one's also FY related, but during yeah. filming, we actually TP'd the boy's house, which we thought was going to be really funny. But yeah. just like you were saying earlier, there's a lot of rules with, like, prize money and altering, like, outcomes and stuff. And so yeah. luckily – we didn't see any of the guys when we did it. Like, we truly were, like, ninjas in the night. But yeah. had we run into, like, any of the guys, it was – it could have caused a lot of conflict in terms of, like, prize money and fairness. And we got in oh. huge, huge trouble for it. Oh, gosh. We were grounded. The lawn yell they at took you? away our alcohol and sent us to our bedrooms for a whole day during our day off. Oh, my gosh. It's so funny because producers really are your parents and you are the kids and you, like – Yes. You, like, are so scared. Did a, did Alon Gale yell at you because he's yelled at me and it's terrifying. No, it wasn't Alon. I want to I wanna say – I mean, we felt it from all, all corners of production and we were like, we – had no like we thought we were being funny, ha ha. Club right, camp, TV right. the boys. We didn't know, yeah. like, and we were like, so so sorry. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on, and I can't wait to see what happens. <laughs> yes, always good to see you. Miss you. We have to get together soon. I know. Well, I come to LA all the time, so we'll make it happen. I'm Caitlin Bristow. I'll see you next Tuesday. See you next. Tuesday.